And uh, before Christmas, uh, we were able to document almost one incident per day of rules for thee but not for me, which is the same way that John Cooper begins his piece in writing for the Heritage Foundation about the fact that politicians, I would call them elected elites, are not practicing what they demand from the rest of us. John joins me now. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, and uh, Happy New Year to you, Lars. Happy New Year to you. As we, uh, 2021 cannot possibly be any worse than 2020. And if it is, I guess I'm going to be surprised. But, I mean, I, I, I guess I guess given who may be in charge and, and what uh, rules they have for us, I, I guess I can't necessarily say 21 won't be worse, but I, I have high hopes. I'm an optimist. But tell me about this. Is You've started making an interactive map at the Heritage Foundation showing all of the ongoing hypocrisy of people in elected official positions making rules and saying we have to have these rules to save lives, and then they turn right back around and violate those self-same rules. What's going on there? Yeah, it's a really troubling trend, and it was something that uh, maybe a month or two ago is when we really started seeing a whole lot of these stories really breaking national news, you know, with Gavin Newsom and Nancy Pelosi's haircut and everything like that. I guess that was a few months ago. But the last couple months we saw a lot of these stories, and so – after we saw enough of these really coming out, we were like, you know, we need to really be tracking these in a place where people can see them all in one spot. And what that really led to was going back and looking even deeper. These incidents have been happening since since the shutdown back in March. We've had people literally, I think March 16th, Bill de Blasio went to his gym in New York City after telling everybody, hey, you should avoid gyms. So this has been going on for, for nine months now, ever since the pandemic really hit the U.S., and so we decided we wanted to put all of these cases, all these stories into one spot, you know, where the American people can look and say, hey, these are the politicians, these are the elected elites, as you call them, uh, rightly so, I think, that are that are violating their own mandates and their own restrictions. And so it's, it's something that we're, you know, continuously updating. We actually just pushed through five more five more updates today to hit 50 cases total. So, and I know that that number is going to keep going higher. So that's, that's really what the motivation was for the project. John, is there any partisan bias in that showing that, that Democrats do it more than Republicans? And, and there may be an answer to that uh, or a couple of reasons for that, but, but is there a partisan nature to who's making the rules and then violating them? It does seem that more leaders on the left are guilty more often. There are some Republicans on the map who have, uh, you know, violated mask mandates or things like that. But it does seem like more people on the left are guilty of that. And I think that's very possibly because in many of these states that have implemented these really severe lockdowns that have, you know, really choked the life out of some of these economies and, and, and the livelihoods of Americans in those states, they're really strict lockdowns. They're really tough policies. And so it makes sense that the people with connections and financial ability to avoid, you know, accountability maybe, they're, they're saying, hey, we don't want to live by those restrictions because they're really bad. So I'm going to go out and go get a fancy dinner or go get my nails done or whatever it happens to be. So, you know, it's, it's not a partisan tool, but it, there is a, kind of an imbalance in the, the results that we're finding so far. Are, are you watching the examples in media as well? Because I keep thinking of Chris Cuomo of the Chicken Noodle News Network, who famously went on and hectored people from behind a microphone and in front of a camera about how they should, they should uh, respond uh, to all of the rules about social distancing, about quarantining and everything else. And then he infamously got caught violating some of those very same rules that he was hectoring everybody else about. Yeah, so this tool is, is specifically focused on, on elected leaders and, and you know, other bureaucrats are unelected. Um, you know, we want to focus on those people who are making the policies that the rest of us are having to live by. But I think you're absolutely right that, that is, there's another subset of the American population, uh, another set of the elites that are doing the same thing. Cuomo is a great example. Another example is just from this past weekend where a, a, a Chicago Teachers Union representative and, and a, a leader in the Chicago Teachers Union, you know, tweeted out, we need to be, we need to be staying home until until it's safe for everyone and all these different things about staying home and social distancing, come to find out she's on vacation in Puerto Rico while she's doing all of this. And so it just there's this class of elites, whether they're politicians or media or you know union leaders, they're all content to tell us how to live. But they refuse to do the same thing themselves, and I think that there's a reason for that. Well, John, one of the – I mean, look, I've got to find fault with the media in general. We highlight these examples, 
But, you know, you can think of a thousand different stories of the last 10 years where uh, an elected official got hectored by the reporters. They, reporters were demanding to know an answer to this question or an answer to that question. You watch, pre, you know, the presidential briefing room, the White House briefing room, and you'll see reporters asking the same questions over and over again, you know, demanding an answer. And they say, that's our job to demand those answers. But I don't see that same kind of vigor applied to this. And you would think it would be something that would be right up their alley to say, you know, you're the governor of Michigan, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, you lay down all these rules for everybody else, and then you, you allow your husband to violate those same same rules. You would think that reporters would be all over her until she gave a satisfactory answer uh, or until she, I know it would be uncomfortable, uh, would call out her own husband and say, I'm going to I'm going to lay down the law to him and say, if these rules are for everybody else, we have to follow them as well. But I haven't heard, I can't recall a single politician making that kind of mea culpa. Yes, I violated it. Yes, I was wrong. And I will do better or I will I will not do that again. But what I do see is them making excuses like I think the uh, the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, who I'm sure is on your list of 50, who says I have to go get my hair cut because I'm very concerned about the hygiene of my hair, which sounds kind of bizarre if you're saying you have to follow these rules to protect lives. But whether or not your hair is clean, you can't do that in the shower by yourself. Yeah, and I think she also said something to the effect of it's been really stressful for everyone, you know, and I just needed to take care of some of that stress. It's like, well, it's been stressful for everyone, you know, but, um, you know, it is what it is. But you're absolutely right. One thing that had really stood out to me uh, in, in p- compiling all these stories was not only just how brazen they were in their violations, but looking at the, the variety of excuses, you know, you know dis- uh, apologies disguised as excuses. I guess the other way around, uh, of, of why they did what they did. You know, oh, I, I was just a, it was an error in judgment. Oh, well, you know, I know that my family's tested and they're safe. You know, all these different excuses instead of just saying, you know what, I was wrong. I, I was a hypocrite in this case, and, you know, I'm going to do better in the future, and I'm actually going to live by the standards I set for everyone else. That's, that's what our leaders are supposed to do. They're supposed to set the standard. They're also supposed to, to be the standard. They're supposed to live by that. And, you know, you're right. Nobody nobody has really offered an actual sincere apology. It's been an excuse or some kind of justification. Well, even Gavin Newsom, when he showed up at the fancy, what is it, French laundry restaurant, and he says he looked at the situation and said, oh, this is not what we were told it was going to be. Uh, he said, I could have got back in my car and driven away. But he didn't want to offend his friend who was celebrating his birthday, so he went ahead and violated the rule. Because to me, the logical question for a reporter to ask is, if you're not going to follow the rules, why should any other citizen feel compelled to follow your rules if you won't follow them? Right. It absolutely undermines confidence in our system, right? Because if you have these people in positions of authority who are setting standards, who are setting rules and setting all these requirements and then refusing to live by them, you know, if you can't be faithful in, you know, doing something as, as, as quote unquote simple as, you know, even putting on a mask or something like that, it really undermines the public's confidence in, in trusting you in, in bigger things, in, in your actual, you know, kind of day to day governance. And I think rightly so. If you can't do simple things and abide by the rules in simple ways, it, it undermines our ability as the American people to believe in your ability to do that in, in much bigger ways. And and that's really just that's, that's devastating to our system of government that's built on representation, you know, you elected representation. John Cooper is at the Heritage Foundation. You can find the interactive map now counting 50 instances of elected elites who make the rules, but they're rules for thee and not for me. The map is available at the Heritage Foundation website. And, John, we always appreciate you coming on the show, and Happy New Year to you. And you too. Thanks, Lars. Thanks very much. That's John Cooper. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.